Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for coming. And as we know, we're in the second phase now of the response to the hurricane. It started off with hurricane and now it's the flood. We spent yesterday in uh, Marlboro, Dillon, Marion, along the coast uh, down in Uri County, particularly in, around Conway. We flew over Nichols. We stopped in Chiraw and there's, there's a lot of flooding going on and water's out, electricity's out, and the water hadn't crested yet. So as we've been, as you've noticed, we have a great team. And it's, it's from the, the local authorities to volunteers to the citizens themselves and uh, to the uh, military forces as well. And as you know, President Trump has activated everyone. And we're getting a lot of attention here in South Carolina as well as North Carolina where we've had this devastating hurricane and now floods, uh, some of which uh, seem to be record setting and unprecedented. But as a reflection of the collaboration that's, uh, that's taking place in the country and in South Carolina and North Carolina in particular, we have some men with us today. General Joseph L. Lingell, who is the chief of the National Guard Bureau, and also General Terrence O'Shaughnessy, who is the commander of the United States Northern Command. And they will speak. General? O'Shaughnessy. Thank you, Governor. Well, first, I want to uh, thank the first responders and, and really highlight the amazing work that the, not only the first responders, but the counties and the state and the National Guard has done. As we look at it from the federal aspect, we tie in and augment the capabilities that we have, and we have to know what we need to bring in order to be effective. And the collaboration that we have had with the local, the local team here, the emergency management team here, and all the way up to the governor has been phenomenal. That has allowed us, from the federal side, to provide the equipment, the, the troops, the airmen, to be able to respond appropriately. And so we currently have about 13,000 uh, DOD personnel, about 3,000 specifically here in South Carolina from the active duty side, and, and, and the same from the National Guard side. Uh, we've been able to integrate in because of the great coordination with this team right here in the Emergency Operations Center, and thanks to the great coordination and collaboration. I would actually want to personally thank the governor uh, for his coordination and his activation of the dual status commander that allows both the active duty and the National Guard to team together with unity of effort. Overall, this has been almost textbook with respect to the national response framework and how the federal force is able to augment and help the local authorities. And only because of the close collaboration has that worked so well. So thank you, Governor. Thank you. General? Yes, sir. Well, I, you know, this is America at its best, and uh, we, we've seen that uh, the great state uh, here has, has really come to the aid of their people when they needed it. And the National Guard, uh, in support of uh, this state and, and uh, South Carolina uh, from all across the nation, ha has uh, really come together to add capacity as South Carolina uh, has needed it. You have 28 additional states um, outside of this as part of this response. Um, all well synchronized with the, the state and, and the federal response under NORTHCOM, General Shaughnessy mentioned, uh, extremely well uh, synchronized uh, event. Um, Life-saving, search and rescue, transportation, all of the things that we borrow um, to assist the state of South Carolina when, when we exceed the capacities here from not only other National Guard states, but the other federal assets from across the nation. So uh, great response so far, textbook, maybe I uh, haven't really uh, never seen it work better with the integration of of state and, and the National Guard and other National Guards with federal resources uh, to, to make sure that uh, we save lives and, and prevent uh, suffering from people here. So it's just, it's great to watch it, great to be part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. General Livingston. Yes, sir. I just want to thank uh, General Shaughnessy and uh, General Lynn Gale uh, for all the great federal support that we've had uh, from the Department of Defense side. Now, we've had federal support from FEMA and everybody else. You know, every time we get in front of the people of South Carolina, we talk about Team South Carolina. And this just this is a portion of that team. That's our boss. That, that, that's, that's the lead of Team South Carolina. But, uh, you know, all of this is just a piece of Team South Carolina. And uh, the, the integration has been very, very good. The, uh, a lot of leaning forward on federal forces, a lot of leaning forward by FEMA, uh, and uh, it, it has shown. I mean, we've had some very tragic things happen here in South Carolina, uh, but we've been able to avoid a lot of tragic things too. And it is the interagency piece, you know, it's, it's DOT, DNR, SLED, DHEC, DSS. 
it's all of the agencies, but it's especially the counties and the cities downrange that are taking such proactive measures to take care of the people of South Carolina. And we are all just proud to be part of that, that team and to be able to offer support. Governor. Thank you. Director. Kim Thank you. Stinson. Thank you, sir. Emergency Management Division. <laughs> Director. As the other uh, speakers have, have mentioned, we've got a wonderfully integrated he team here in South Carolina from the local to the state to the federal level and also includes voluntary agencies. We have had a tremendous amount of experience in training together, operating together, and exercising together, and it pays off in events like this. Now, unfortunately, we've had numerous uh, major declarations here in the last, uh, last few years, but it's brought, brought us to where we are today in that fully integrated team uh, to make sure that we safeguard the citizens of South Carolina. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You. Gentlemen, we're, we're glad, glad you're here. Uh, and we are delighted to be working with you and, and thrilled to have this, this cooperation and collaboration bringing not only all the brain power but the, the muscle behind it to see to it that the people of South Carolina are safe. And thank you very much. We yes, appreciate sir. you being here. Thank yes, you, sir. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, for, sir, can you go over those numbers again? Is that 3,000 just in South Carolina and the rest are in North Carolina? Or I, I didn't quite get that. Yeah, specifically to South Carolina on the active duty only side, so not National Guard, which is doing some amazing work as well. Uh, we have about 3,000 active duty members. That includes uh, Air Force personnel, for example, at Charleston, ready for search and rescue with some of our guardian angels and helicopters. Uh, we have at uh, Fort Jackson uh, quite a uh, few trucks that we've integrated into the broader South Carolina effort. Uh, and then literally off the coast, we have uh, the Cursage and the Arlington, they're less than 30 miles off the coast, uh, able to fly operations of both heavy lift helicopters, MV-22s, uh, and are loaded, uh, ready to be prepared for any future flooding efforts. Thanks to the coordination of this ops center, we were able to actually preload those ships with the right equipment that was gonna be applicable to the exact situation we're in right now. So again, this team here in South Carolina has really allowed the federal aspect to come in prepared. Have those Thank ships you. been used at all yet? Uh, we are using, we are flying, actively flying from the ships from the, from the active duty side, uh, gaining situational awareness, flying to understand the environment here, uh, and we're prepared to continue to use those ships and all the equipment on the ships to include some uh, both uh, landing capability, some river capability, uh, and then again the vertical lift, the uh, helicopters as well. And I understand Marines are on that ship. Have the Marines been deployed? All the, the Marines time? have not been deployed, but there are uh, about almost uh, about 2,200 uh, total personnel on the ships, which includes uh, both Marines and Navy personnel. Given More questions that, for these gentlemen? Uh, just given that the event was contained mostly to the coast, has that helped you guys in your response efforts, not having to stretch it up here to the Midlands too much? And just mainly having one area that you need to come back to contain? Yes, it's, it's been, we've had two threats. One is the hurricanes with the wind and the water and the surge. And uh, that, that's, that part is over. But the, the second part, which has been predicted with great certainty is the flooding and we know it's coming it's it's all not here yet it appears but they're having record flooding in North Carolina Wilmington I believe is cut off there, there are other places that we have not we have not experienced that we have prepared as you know we're in Conway keeping the road open down there we, we have been very prepared and very active in getting things done to keep to keep the, the people safe but but uh, Oh, yes, th this is the second. This is the second part of it, and of course, the third part will be the rebuild. General, uh, we we wish it had been uh, uh, contained on the coast. We're we're as far uh, west as uh, Chester, and we're out in Darlington County, so it is a, a whole northern part of the state response right now, and uh, our, our our hearts and minds go out to everyone that's affected out there, but. Uh, uh, the, the nice thing is we've got the Coast Guard flying the coast. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the uh, Air, Air Force and Army National Guard flying the interior of the state, and we're able to affect evacuations and rescues uh, along, again, with all the interagency partners in South Carolina. But it is not, unfortunately, it's not just a coastal event. We had a report this morning saying that Florence is going to be one of the top 10 most costly storms. I mean, anybody want to talk about how you guys are going to deal with that, the damages, uh, how you're going to prepare to, to get South Carolina and North Carolina back together? Yes. Director Stimson? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Uh, unfortunately, we've gone through this uh, several times before here recently, but we're working through the process right now of gathering damage assessment. And as the governor indicated, so far we, in terms of the actual hurricane itself coming through here and the wind, we've had very little damage, but we're starting to get reports for infrastructure damage now in terms of uh, you know, water uh, treatment plants, roads, culverts, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So we're continuing to gather that information and uh, there's no doubt there's, there'll be significant damage here in South Carolina as it was during Matthew and some of the other operations. What are your biggest concerns for today for flooding and possible rescues? Well, obviously, just what you said, uh, you know, having flooding and, and possible rescues, there's been limited rescues going on throughout the state for the last couple of days due to the flash flooding that we had earlier now, primarily concentrating on the river flooding. Uh, but we've got uh, assets embedded within the counties uh, in terms of the National Guard uh, rescue assets, uh, DNR rescue assets. We have assets from out of state as far away as Louisiana for swift water rescue. Uh, we've got local uh, in all the emergency operations centers. We have our, our personnel embedded in the EOC to affect coordination. So we're out there uh, across the board in the impacted area and ready to react if we need to uh, as, as a group. But is there any one area that stayed any along any particular river that you're co to particularly concerned about today? Uh, well, I think we're concerned about all of them, but all those watersheds, you know, the PD, the little PD, the Waccamaw, uh, but I guess, you know, it's going to start more in the north, uh, northern part of the PD, and then work its way w south. So. I guess the answer would be right now the northern end of the PD is what we're primarily concerned with today, uh, and that'll uh, shift over time, but uh, that entire area is an area of concern. Any updates in terms of uh, numbers for rescues, evacuations, areas that uh, were affected yesterday, today? Yeah, I don't have those numbers right now. We tried to gather some of the numbers on the evacuations, and the counties are a little bit unsure about how many people have evacuated or left their homes right now, but we're trying to gather that information. But I, I would. Definitely, I'm sure that there's in the hundreds that have left their homes right now, and there's even as far south as, uh, as in Horry County, some of them are making plans to leave or have left already. How about rescues? Any tally? I, I don't have that tally right now, no. Given that we're worried about floods and the dams breaking was such a big concern back in the 2015 floods, have you guys addressed that at all? Is there any uh, areas in particular you're watching on that front? Well, that's probably better for DHEC to answer that. Uh, they've got a, a good team that's working all those issues. They've got eyes on many of the uh, dams uh, that are of concern right now uh, to make sure that they monitor that very closely. And the local county emergency managers and the local authorities are also monitoring that in terms of any downstream evacuations if they have to do that. But that's all in play right now. Governor, are you considering requesting federal aid for Chesterfield County? Yes, ma'am. Talk about that a little bit. Well, that's where Terrell is, and they, bet they were underwater two days ago. The entire town was underwater, and there, were, there was one lady there, 91 years old, who'd, who'd uh, told uh, Richie Yow, the representative from there, that she'd never seen water that deep ever. And uh, we, uh, Mr. Yow and, and the, the uh, sheriff were in the helicopter with us as we, we toured the area, and, and sure enough, it reminded me of earlier floods where you get down close to the forest and uh, you, you see water, water everywhere. And you, in some places, you could hardly tell where the river was because the water was everywhere. So uh, we in Columbia and other places on the coast, the, the hurricane has the hurricane passed, the winds and the rain are, are, are gone, mostly. But uh, up, up there, from Chesterfield on down through Marlboro, Dillon, uh, Marion, Ori, and, and those areas, uh, they, they, they're having flooding. And it's a, it's a big, it's a major flood. Uh, you, you, you don't feel it here, but I guarantee you they feel it there. So we are, we're shifting all of our resources and all of our attention uh, to the, we want to keep things safe on the coast and where get all the power lines back up and get the water systems working. But as those rivers uh, flow and overflow and crest, it knocks out all the water systems that are taking water out of the rivers, for example. And so what that means, there'll be no water in all those towns. So we're having to get water there. We're having to get the electricity back on. Uh, rescues are going up. But that whole part of the state is, is under a severe threat now. And we, are, we have the whole team concentrating on it. How surprised were you, Governor, to find those people on that rooftop yesterday? Well, we, we've, of course, been hearing r reports of people getting rescued. So it was not a surprise to come across some ourselves that, uh, that needed, needed some help. They apparently, there were two men, apparently they'd been riding on a, a road uh, that got uh, overwhelmed by the water. And uh, when we got there, the, the vehicle was 
uh, off the side of the road, the low side of the road. The, the water was coming over the, the road from the other side. The riverside looked like a waterfall. I mean, it was about six inches deep coming across the road than the water uh, on the on the downside. But they were, when we went by the first time, the water was, oh, I guess about a foot, maybe a foot, uh, more than a foot below the top of the vehicle they were on when we came back and we called the rescue and, and we, we circled around and came back and uh, they only had a, a few inches of, of vehicles sticking up. So we were glad to get them out, but that just shows the danger. Apparently they were, they were riding on that road and the water hit them and, uh, it, and threw them off the road onto the side of the road. Fortunately, their vehicle did not overturn. They did not drown. They were not hurt. They were sitting there waiting to be rescued and we're happy we came along. And we're glad to have the, have the, the the helicopter and the vehicle and the talent out there, the strength to, to make those kind of things happen. Governor, we know that uh, North Carolina was devastated by Florence. What have the conversations with North, North Carolina's governor been about? We've been in communication. Uh, Roy Cooper is, is, is working around the clock as his team. Uh, we're doing the same things here that they, they're doing there. And uh, some of uh, the resources from around the country, of course, uh, they come in here, but they're also going to North Carolina. So this is really, uh, in the, the presence of the generals here, is, is a, a, a demonstration of the commitment to this uh, American team to see that our people are kept safe. General Ashanti, how is, what's the condition of uh, Camp Lejeune thus far? Is it stable? Uh, it is stable. Uh, the Marines there have been working very hard uh, to ensure uh, that they are taking care of the, the Marines that are on the base and their families, but they're also been able to get out and help the local community. Another great example of this area just has so many military installations that are part of the communities of which they live. And in this case, they are actually able to use some of their amphibious vehicles to work with the local authorities uh, to be part of the, uh, of the rescue efforts as well. So Camp Lejeune is doing very well. They're trying to be part of the, the community uh, and are able to bring some of their assets to bear in that regard. Is there any concern that Conway might get cut off as Wilmington is in North Carolina right now? Yeah, yes, the road 378 and, 50, and 501 go through Conway, and that's where Christie Hall and the Department of Transportation have been hauling those uh, sandbags. You've seen those one-ton uh, sandbags to keep that road open. Uh, you may be able to get to Conway, but you won't be able to get through Conway, and that and Conway is is the main avenue to the the rest of Orie County, particularly if those other roads that are farther north get cut off, which is likely there are three bridges there that, that we're watching very closely. But uh, we, want to, we want to keep that avenue open. You have emergency equipment, you have supplies, you have all kinds of things. If you don't have a good road you can go in and out on, then you got a real problem. So we don't want what, uh, we don't want what has happened in North Carolina with Wilmington to happen here, and so far it has not. Governor, you mentioned the water supply problem. Is there a city or a town with an acute problem Yes, Chiral. Right. Conway says they're very concerned they may lose theirs. That's right. Well, all of them along that, uh, along the, the, the PD, uh, the greater PD as well as the little PD uh, in, in, is where it seems to be most of the threats. Those counties uh, that I mentioned, I imagine most of them are going to have problems with water. If they don't have the water cut off, they're going to have problems with water anyway, as well as their entire infrastructure. You mentioned Chiral already has no water. Are there other towns that don't as well that you know of? Oh, I would ask Mr. Stinson. Right now, it's just as the governor said, that's the only one we know about right this uh, this minute. And, but as he said, there's others that potentially will be affected. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, governor, do we know if uh, the president, vice president, uh, will be uh, visiting the Myrtle Beach area tomorrow? Uh, if they'll be in the Wilmington area? We don't know. Um, we We'd love to have them. We don't know. We. I tell you what, though, we are. We are delighted to have had the attention and the communication with uh, President Trump and the administration, uh, the officials, the cabinet members, I think virtually all of them have been in communication numerous times. And I, I know the, uh, the president's uh, uh, office ha has, has called the Sherall, I, I think uh, Representative uh, Richie Yall, the sheriff, I think three times just in the last couple of days. So there's constant communication and that's, uh, that's something that's very important. One thing we've learned is that we learned a lot before we got here with Hurricane Florence because the response 
of uh, Team South Carolina has been phenomenal. Well, one reason we're not having uh, problems uh, that we've experienced before is because we weren't learned the lessons then. One thing we've learned is that uh, you have to expect the unexpected. Uh, this, this Hurricane Florence with the trajectory, the way it came in, they're saying it's the first time in, in recorded history that that's happened where it's just flatlined across the Atlantic and come straight in and not been able to move uh, upward. Fortunately, it, had, it was not uh, any stronger than it was. It was, it was strong enough. And uh, we're glad that we uh, did not get the uh, direct uh, landfall here in South Carolina of those high winds which were existing in that hurricane until it got right up on us. But, um, and I know that uh, Roy Cooper and the other, all the authorities and people in North Carolina are glad it, it weakened a little bit because it, it always could have been worse. But the main lesson that we, we learn and relearn and relearn is you got to be ready, you have to be prepared, you have to be uh, able, you have to get your things ready in advance. Uh, when, when it's raining, it's not the time to fix the roof. You have to start early, and we've done that. And the, what you've seen happen in South Carolina is, is a good example of what good preparation can do. Last question, if there is one. General Livingston, how many National Guard troops do we still have deployed? We have about 3,000 deployed right now, uh, mainly on the uh, Conway effort, uh, working infrastructure protection throughout the area, and then high water vehicle and uh, aerial uh, search and rescue. Y'all, thank you very much. General Langer, yes, thank, thank you. you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor.